In this video, I'll show you five of my favorite pro presenter hacks to save you time. Let's get started. Hack number one is the reflow tool. If you haven't been using the reflow tool yet, this will save you a bunch of time. We have a few slides here for one of our songs and they all have lines of text on them, but I might want to break them down so there's less lines of text on each slide. I could go and copy and paste or add new slides, but instead I'm going to use the reflow tool at the top here. So I'm going to open this up and what I can do is I have all my slides on the right and all the content on my slides on the left and I can go through and click next to the line I want and go insert slide break. But where it's even faster and easier than that, I can go and put my cursor where I want and I can just press control enter on my keyboard and it automatically inserts my slide break. So if I wanted two lines to each and every slide, I just put it after my second line and go control enter. And there it is, I'm done. Back to my presentation. And you can see I now have all my slides divided into two lines, fast and easy. This can be used for splitting up any type of text. It doesn't have to be a song. It could be sermon notes. It could be something else. But anytime you need to divide up your content into multiple slides, don't forget about the reflow tool. Hack number two is arrangements. If you have songs that you use a lot in church, and often you might use different versions of the same song, you want to start using arrangements. To access arrangements, I'm going to go up to the top right here of my song. I'm going to click on this little symbol here, and that will open the arrangements tab. Now, if you're bringing your songs into ProPresenter from Song Select, they'll automatically have the verse and the chorus and the bridge and other groups already labeled for your songs, but you can add these to yourself. You simply right click on your slide, go to group and choose which label you'd like to label it as. Once you've got your songs all labeled as verses and chorus, etc., in your arrangements tab, you'll be able to see that it goes verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus. Now, if we use different versions of this song or different arrangements, we can create them in ProPresenter. So you always start in your master arrangement and we can't edit that. Instead, we're going to click on master. We're going to go new arrangement. I'm just going to call it test arrangement for this video. Once I'm in my test arrangement, you can see that the menu at the top changed slightly. And now I have the option to delete things or add things. So if I didn't want to sing the chorus a second time, I can get rid of it and it automatically gets rid of it down the bottom. If I wanted to move verse one to the end, I could do that and I can just drag it back again as well. If I wanted to add a chorus, I can grab it from the top and drag it in. I then might want to sing verse one again and then another chorus and then a bridge. And you can see how quickly and easy it is to rearrange your song in a new variation. Now, where it gets really exciting is I now have different versions because if I go back into my menu here and I go back to my master, it still has the original version. How can I use this in my services? Well, if we jump into a service over here and we go and pull in our ocean song into this service, down here, I now have my song here and then oceans underneath. I can then right click on this and I can choose which arrangement I want to sing. So I have my master arrangement, my Sunday worship arrangement, and the test arrangement that we just created there. If I choose that, it automatically adds in the test arrangement, and it also adds the label after the song in brackets here and over here, so that you can tell which arrangement is currently showing. If it's the incorrect arrangement, I can just right click on it, arrangement, and change it back to another one. So if you sing the same song in different versions, often I highly encourage you to start using arrangements. Hack number three is themes. If you're not using themes in ProPresenter yet, you need to start using themes. Often people only use themes if they want to use two different outputs showing the same material in two different ways. But even if you just have one output, you want to start using themes. What is a theme? Well, here in my slides, if I click on them, you can see that it actually shows them as this pink and blue color on the actual slide. If I come down to say my MC spot and I click on here, it actually shows it as this full slide. Yet when I go in and edit my slide, my slide is blank with just the title and I come back out, it says the same words with a different picture and background on the back because I'm using a theme. Why do you want to use a theme? Because you can change your 
content of your slides each week and you don't necessarily have to update the background or remember where the image comes from and put it on every slide. You can just apply your theme to the first slide and it keeps it until your theme changes, such as in this song here, it changes to a different theme. If you're changing your theme every week, you can still do this by editing the theme. If I go to the more menu at the top, I can get the option for the theme editor and you can see this is where I have my theme set up. So we can have different slides for different content and different variations. And this has been downloaded as an example from ProPresenter. So you can download the same one if you wish to do so. And you can see that they've named each different slide a different type of content that could be displayed. So we have things like general text, quotes, lyrics, general lyrics, and a few different options. I'm not going to go through exactly how to create a theme in this video because it will take a long time, but we already have a video about looks and themes that you can go and find on our channel and I'll link it below for you. So if you want to know about themes and how they actually work and how you can use them, make sure you go and check out that video, but start using themes because it will save you a lot of time instead of making individual slides with the actual picture and content inside of them already. Hack number four is macros. So macros are found over here on the right hand side of your control panel under the little M in the brackets, which is the symbol for macros. Now what macros allow you to do is to group lots of actions that occur at the same time under one macro. So instead of applying three or four things to one slide, you can apply the one macro to the slide and all of those actions come together with it. So for example, here, I have a macro named worship, which we apply to the start of every single worship song. What does this macro do? It applies the look for our lyrics, and then it also clears all. So if there's background music playing before it, if there's something else going on, if there's a video, and then we're going into our worship, it clears all that so that we have a clean screen for just our lyrics. Now, instead of applying those two individual items to the first slide of each song, I can simply grab that macro and drag it to the first slide of my song. I can go to the next song and I can grab it and drag it in. And so I can do that for every single song really quickly and easily knowing that that's my worship macro. For my MC spot, I have a macro that changes the look to my title slides look for my MC spot. And then I also have an action that starts the MC spot timer. So I can simply grab that macro and put it onto the first slide of my MC spot and know that it will change the look and the timer in one action. If we come down here, I have the same thing for my preach, and then I have one called service reset. Now this macro isn't actually on any slides at all, but the way we use it is after we go through a full practice of our service in the morning at church, all of our timers and things have been set off and they're running or they've stopped and they're not quite back to normal and we've got music playing and we're at the end and everything's a little bit used and it's not quite right. I can just come into macros here and I just click service reset and it does all of these actions. It resets all my timers individually. It applies the look that's needed and it clears everything so that then I can come straight up to the top, click my first slide and I know straight away my service is ready to go everything's been removed and all my timers under my timer tab have been reset to their original timer amounts. So we never end up with a timer that was running accidentally during the practice and hasn't been reset during the service. So if you don't use macros already, I highly encourage you to start using macros, but you just need to make sure you think about the structure of your service, the layout, and know when each action occurs so that you can start grouping them together under your macros. Hack number five, and one of my favorites, is Smart Playlists. So if we open our media folder down the bottom here, you can see that we have a folder called ProPresenter 7 Media Folder, and we have one called Sample Content. Now, the one thing that can become really frustrating with ProPresenter each week if you're changing things or bringing in videos or pictures is having to import them into ProPresenter and then they get stored in a folder and you just keep dragging media in over and over and over again. Now, Smart Playlists fix this. How do they work? Now, I can go to the little plus icon here and go New Smart Playlist and it opens up for me to select a folder on my computer. So if I go to my desktop, I have a folder I've already created and it's called ProPresenter 7 Media. If I go OK, the way that this works is instead of importing media into ProPresenter, 
I just need to go and put my photos or my media that I want in ProPresenter into the folder called ProPresenter 7 Media on my computer and ProPresenter will automatically have all the media in this section that I save into that folder. So instead of me having to import into ProPresenter, ProPresenter is checking that one folder that I've created and it's seeing if there's anything new and it will all appear here in ProPresenter, which is what I've done with this media folder. So instead of bringing in all this content each week as I need it or finding the video and uploading it, I just need to save my media into the folder on my computer that I've created and linked into ProPresenter as a smart playlist. If you're not using smart playlists, I highly encourage you to have a go at using smart playlists because it makes your workflow so much easier. Now, my bonus hack for this video is actually one that a lot of people don't spend time thinking about in terms of ProPresenter, and that's just to stay organized. There is a lot going on in ProPresenter and each little element of your service has its own unique way of doing things. So we could use arrangements for songs, we can use smart playlists for media, we can use looks and themes, and there's lots happening. So the one thing you want to do is make sure you spend some time thinking about how you're going to stay organized. Whether that's making sure your playlists up here are nice and neat and in an orderly fashion, whether that's making sure you have your library set up with headings so that people understand where things are stored, or if you've got your macro set up to make your life nice and easy, but they're structured well and clearly so that people can understand, you just want to stay organized in ProPresenter so that everything's there and it's nice and clear and labeled. If you can keep ProPresenter organized and structured well, then your life's going to be a lot easier because you'll be able to find everything at your fingertips as you need. These are my favorite ProPresenter 7 hacks. If you have any other ideas or hacks, please drop them in the comments below. And as always, thank